Hello dear friends and my students, uh, this is Naveen Kumar Saini in the course Electromagnetic Field Theory, code is KEE 301. So, because this is our first lecture, so in that first of all we must know what is the need of Electromagnetic Field Theory. So, each one of you are aware that there are various competitive exams where Electromagnetic Field Theory asked in the very significant weightage. So, in that the EM in short we call it as the EMFT right that is electromagnetic field theory and this course is beneficial for the uh, students of electrical students and the electronics and communication branch. So, these two branch are significantly use this subject and this subject is used for the competitive exam as well, but as per the educative syllabus uh, we will cover uh, this course in a very uh, systematic manner, so that students can learn easily. So, in that course is code is KEE 301 and the first lecture will going through the coordinate systems and the transmission uh, transformations. So, coordinate systems and the transformations. Okay. So, in that evolution scheme as per the equity syllabus that is internal marks of 50 marks and the external marks of 100 marks. Okay. So, before going into deep uh, deep understanding of this electromagnetic field theory, important point is the coordinate systems and transformation which is we will go through the pure basics. So, if see uh, every student is scared about this subject I have seen in the class as well that uh, uh, when they go through this EMFT name I mean they scared, but we have to remove this scaring part. So, uh, in that way we will cover the each and every step or the basic part of the EMFT. So, in that we will go for this unit 1 which comprise the coordinate systems and the transformation which we will go through the first lecture in that and in this the basics of vector uh, because whenever we want to understand the electromagnetic field theory. So, in that uh, we must know what is the basic tool which can be used to understand the EMFT electromagnetic field theory. So, in that we will cover the addition, subtraction and multiplication which is I, uh, I know that uh, most of the students know about this, but when whenever you go through this uh, numerical part. So, most of the students make the very silly mistakes in that. So, we have to go for the basics concepts and the numerical part of that one. And then we will cover the vector calculus. So, this is the next part of basics of vector. In vector calculus we will cover the differential length, area, volume, line integral, surface integral or the volume integrals as well. Then after that we will cover the del operator, gradient, divergence of a vector. So, these are the applications of you can say using the vectors vector right. So, the after that we will cover about the divergence theorem, curl of a vector, Stokes theorem and the at last we will cover the Laplacian, Laplacian of, of a scalar. Okay. So, this completely will cover the in unit 1. So, when we come into the unit 2, so in the first unit uh, we will cover about the basic tool which can be used to understand the EMFT, then we will cover the electrostatic fields. Okay. So, be because we are aware that electromagnetic field theory is what? This is the uh, co this is what? This is the combination of electric and the magnetic field, right. So, this uh, from that part we will cover first the electrostatic. So, this electrostatic that is a Coulomb's law and the field intensity we will cover in that. In this uh, electric field due to charge distributions, electric flux density, Gauss law, Maxwell equation and the electric dipole and flux lines, then we will cover about the energy density in electrostatic fields, electric dipole and flux and electric field materials and properties of the different materials in which we will discuss about the uh, how the electric field behavior will change when it is into the any material or in any medium. Then basic part of the convection and the conduction currents we, we will also cover. Then finally, 
the we will discuss about the conductors what is the effect or what is the property of conductor change when it is into the electric field okay then the polarization in dielectrics dielectric constants continuity equation and the relaxation time then boundary conditions so uh, this boundary condition again this is very very important part uh, if you want to understand the movement of em waves so we must know about uh, how the electric field will change when it is moving from one medium to another medium okay so in that way we have to understand about that one and at last we will cover about the electrostatic boundary value problem in this we will cover about the poisson's equations and the laplacian equation and at last we will cover about the methods of images so in the second unit we will cover completely electrostatic field i am not talking about the electric time varying field right now i am talking talking about the electrostatic field so next in second part of em is the magnetic field so which we will cover into the unit 3 in that magnetostatic fields will cover in that we will cover about the biosevert's law ampere circuit law maxwell's equations ampere's uh, application of maxwell ampere's law magnetic flux density uh, maxwell's equation which will derive uh, from that uh, derivation of ma ma concept of uh, magnetic flux density then maxwell's equation for static field and the at last magnetic scalar and the vector potentials so these concepts we will cover into the unit 3 then in the unit 4 we will have the material and devices and the in combined fashion we will say this a magnetic forces okay so because when i am when i am talking about the magnetic forces is like that when the con two concurrent con conductors are come into the contact so in that case how the this will uh, affects to each other okay so it may be uh, rep repel it may be attract and like that and what is the direction uh, i mean how the elect uh, how we can calculate the magnetic field intensity in that okay so all these things we will discuss about uh, uh, about the which comprise the magnetic forces okay then forces due to the magnetic fields magnetic torque and the moment magnetic dipole magnetization in the material magnetic boundary condition inductors and inductances magnetic energy okay so all the things which will cover the movement of the magnetic field and how it will affect into the material and what are the different properties will change uh, when this magnetic field is moving into the material so all these things we will cover into the unit 4 okay so how the energy will be stored into the uh, due to magnetic field so this also we will cover into the derivation of magnetic energy okay so again as we have the electric field boundary condition we have the magnetic field boundary condition so these are very very important part in our syllabus so which we will cover right and next in the unit 5 waves and the applications so in the as i said in the unit 1 we will cover about the electric uh, we will cover about the basics of the uh, i mean vectors or uh, you can say these are these are the tool which we will use to understand the em theory and in that em theory electric field that is in static form we will cover into the unit 2 and in unit 3 we will cover about the static magnetic field so that is the electromagnetic field now then in the unit 4 we will cover about the forces effect of forces and then finally in the unit 5 we will cover about the waves how the waves will generate and what are the experimental results by which we see the how electric and magnetic fields are correlated with each other okay or what is the combined effect of electric and magnetic field uh, how it is i mean this electric field is related with the magnetic field in or combined into the static form or in time varying field so these concepts we will cover in completely into this unit 5 okay so in that the transformation and the motional electromagnetic forces these are one part of that to understand displacement current so what is the concept behind the displacement current and how this is related with the time varying fields 
okay, or how it is related with the movement of charges. So, these things we will cover uh, by the concept of displacement current and uh, this displacement current is responsible for the wireless communication. So, this is very very interesting and a very important topic which we will cover into the unit 5. Okay. So, and then finally, we will come to the stage where we will say that the Maxwell's equation which is in the final form for the electromagnetic wave generation or the propagation. So, if we will understand all this concept then only we will say that the wave is generated or wave is propagating from point 1 to point 2. Okay. Otherwise, uh, there is no meaning that when we are saying that electric and magnetic field are static and wave is generated. Wave will be generated or propagate when it is time varying fields. So, when it is time varying fields means electric field and the magnetic field will relate move uh, change with the time, it will affect with the time. Then after the generation of the waves, so this wave may be move into the medium. So, these mediums may be categorized into different ways like first is the loss dielectric. Okay. So, this loss dielectric or the lossy dielectric. So, this is a generalized uh, dielectric medium in which the wave propagation or generation we will discuss and how to um, create or how to uh, define the wave equations into the lossy dielectric. So, this is a generalized case. Then special cases of this loss dielectric is the lossless dielectric. So, this lossless dielectric we will discuss into the free space medium or the this uh, plane waves as I am saying uh, talking about EM wave. So, this EM wave is the nothing but the plane wave or uniform plane wave. So, this wave uh, movement into the good conductors. So, how it will affect? Okay, what are the properties will change of wave when it is moving into the good conductor. Similar to that we will take the example of good dielectrics. Okay. So, in this way we will also discuss about the how the if, uh, properties of the medium will change when or how, what is the property of medium as well when the wave is propagating into the different, different medium. Then we will discuss about the power and the pointing vector. So, this is nothing but uh, because when we are saying the wave is propagating it means the propagation of wave from one point to another point or the transfer transportation of energy from one point to another point. So, this transportation energy is called nothing but the pointing vector. So, this we will cover in this. Then reflection of plane wave in the normal incidence uh, which is the part of syllabus. So, there are two types of an uh, incidence of wave in on a, in one medium that is normal incidence and the oblique incidence, but we will cover here on the normal incidence. Then at last the application of EM wave will we will discuss in the transmission line and the graphical representation of the wave uh, I mean by for different parameters we will cover into the Smith chart. So, these are very very important class I mean EMFT is nothing but a very classical and a modern part which we have to be discuss from the basic right. Okay. So, as I have discussed about the all the units which we will cover in our syllabus. So, the book which I will refer that is Sadiku MNO. So, in this MNO Sadiku. So, that is the elements of electromagnetic and uh, publication through the Oxford University Press. And another reference book that is HET which is well known and this is ele engineering electromagnetics TMH Tata Mega Hills education. So, uh, but most of the part which I will cover through the book, but I will take more examples to make you understand about the EMFT. So, I will also take the reference of it, but I will suggest please refer to the at least one book you must refer that is the uh, elements of electromagnetic. Okay. So, very important point what is electromagnetics? So, as we are very much aware that uh, we are we have some questions as well how the wave in wireless communication how the wave is propagating. What is the reason to put the our antennas at the top of the roof? 
why in the channel um, wave will propagate from one point to another point ok. So, what is the reason uh, what is the reason when we are going uh, when we have the mobile phone and we are keeping this mobile phone near to the corner of the room and the signal is good, but in any other place signal is different. So, these things how it will affect. So, these are reasons are behind for that one is the electromagnetism. So, what is electromagnetism which is nothing but this is a combination of electric and the magnetic phenomena. So, when you combine this electric and magnetic phenomena then we will say this is the EM wave or electromagnetic wave is propagating and this electromagnetic wave is responsible for the communication part ok. So, completely this is dedicated for electric domain students and for the uh, electrons communication domain students. So, I will suggest that each one of you groups must uh, watch this video so that it will help you to understand the electromagnetic field theory completely. And as I promise that I will start from the basics. So, these things will help you to understand very nicely. So, there are few other applications where the electromagnetic or radio waves will be used like microwave, microwave oven as you are aware about that. Antennas. So, antennas are responsible for transmission of signals from transmitting antenna to receiving antenna and in in between the medium of that one right. Then we have the electric machines. So, the electric machines have the magnetic poles. So, this may be used uh, because charges are because of the movement of charges the EM waves will be generated. Satellite communication and then radar fiber optics etcetera. There are so many applications in which the radio waves or EM waves can be will be used for in modern communication system right. So, how it looks like uh, as I said in if we I am talking about the EM wave. So, EM wave is nothing but the combination of the electric field and the magnetic field electric field and the magnetic field in that you can see that this uh, red red signal is representing nothing but the electric field and the magnetic field is representing by the blue color. So, this is nothing but you can see if we have this type of signals. So, uh, if we have like this ok. So, this is nothing but your electric field I am taking the example of that and the H field will be what the perpendicular of that one like this. Okay. So, in this way the wave generation can occur when we have electric and magnetic field may be perpendicular may be of some angle this will depends upon the polarization ok. So, you can understand in this way if uh, if you are this is your x this is y and this is z. So, we can say that the electric field is in the x direction uh, z direction and magnetic field which is in the uh, magnetic field that is into the x direction. So, in that way the direction what is the direction of the wave propagation? So, direction of wave propagation will be perpendicular to the x and z plane. So, this direction will become y direction. I hope this point is clear to all of you that the and this wave propagation is will be in the y direction and this propagation is nothing but we can say this is the wave fronts movement into the y direction. Okay. So, whenever we see the wave propagation it means the wave fronts are moving from one point to another point or you can say the shifting of wave fronts from one point to another point. Okay. So, in a, that frame or the wave front that is called the uniform plane wave in which the plane of the wave is propagated from one point to another point. Okay. So, very basic important point which you have to keep in mind from the basic uh, from the uh, lecture 1 to up to last lecture that the direction of wave propagation will be perpendicular to the plane which contains the electric and magnetic field. So, in, in short manner we can say if this is my plane. So, this is the direction of wave propagation and if this is your x and this is your z ok. So, this direction is the direction of wave propagation and uh, this x is the direction in which the electric field or the magnetic field will be there and similar to that in the z direction magnetic field or electric field will be there. Suppose, this in x direction electric field is there in that case z direction will have the 
magnetic field. Suppose elect, uh, in, in x direction we have the h magnetic field in that way the z direction will have the electric field. So, this is very very important which you have to keep in mind, but the direction of wave propagation will be in perpendicular to the plane which contains the x and z. Okay. So, this Maxwell's equation which is which you have to keep in mind all the time, uh, but we will drive each and every step of this Maxwell equation unit by unit. Okay. So, first important equation is del dot d that is equal to rho v and this is the integral part of that which we will use the divergence theorem to derive this. Then we have del dot b is equal to 0, again we have uh, this b dot d s is equal to 0 integral part this and uh, del cross e is equal to minus del b upon del t and this is the integral part of that where we will apply the Stokes theorem as well. Then we have del dot del cross h curl of h is equal to j plus del d upon del t and when we apply the Stokes theorem in that then the resultant will be into the integral form. So, the different method uh, different theorems uh, used to derive this Maxwell's equations just like uh, Gauss law, Ampere's law, right, Faraday's law. So, these laws are used for derivation of this Maxwell's equations in time varying field. Okay. So, this is very very important and these are Maxwell's equations are responsible for, for the propagation of the waves. Okay. If we have if I mean the question arises uh, how it is responsible for that. So, in this equation you can see that uh, if uh, in this third equation that del cross E is equal to minus del B upon del T. So, this electric field is related with the magnetic field is that clear and here itself this H that is a magnetic field intensity which is related with the D, D is what again epsilon E electric field intensity. So, this again magnetic field is related with the electric field. So, these two equations are responsible for the for finding the wave equations by using the these two Maxwell equations. So, this is very simple you can see the cross product is what is the orientation. So, when we talk about the orientation it means we are talking about the uh, movement circulation right. So, these things we will cover completely in our syllabus which will help you to understand how the waves are generated. But you have to keep this picture in your mind, uh, this complete picture of uh, Maxwell equations, which will help you to understand clearly about the wave uh, electromagnetic field theory. So, now as I we before starting to go into the coordinate systems, we must know about the pure basic part as I promise that I will start from the basic, then I will come to the step by step ahead. Okay. So, first is the scalar and the vectors. So, in that scalar, what is scalar? A scalar is nothing but this is a simple magnitude. So, this scalar is this scalar is the quantity which has the only magnitude. So, there is no directions. Okay. So, there is direction, there is no direction. Fine, no direction. So, the examples for that time, distance, temperature, mass, population. So, these are the numbers. So, if I am asking the time, what is the time? 830, right. So, 830 is what? This is the just number, right. This is scalar quantity, there is no directions is required for that. Distance 10 kilometer, there is no directions is required for that. If I am not saying the displacement, I am talking about the distance distance just a number. So, this is the scalar quantity, temperature, mass, population, what is the population of the country like that. Okay. So, these are the scalar values, scalar quantity, but when we apply the, when we give directions for that, so we call the vectors. So, in the vector, the quantity that has both the magnitude and the direction. So, we call it the vectors. So, velocity, force, displacement, electric field, magnetic field 
etc. So, there are various examples of scalars and the vectors which you have to keep in mind the difference between the two and how the how we represent the scalar quantity and the vector quantity. This is very very important because students do the very big mistake in that they just refer the scalar and vectors in the same way. It is not like that. So, you have to be very much familiar the notations of the scalars and the vectors. Next very 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 important point is the unit vector. So, as I said uh, we are talking about the scalar, we talked about the vector and how we define the vectors. So, the definition of vector is what magnitude and the direction. So, that direction is provided by the unit vectors. Okay. So, the definition of the unit vector is what for a vector a unit vector is small a a cap we can say we can write it in different many ways for the unit vectors we can make it as the bold or we can use as the a a cap like that but generally we will use this type of symbolic representation of the unit vector so the unit vector a a along a is defined as a a is equal to a upon mod of a so, we can say this is nothing but this is a vector a divided by the mode of that vector. So, this is defined the this is the definition of the unit vector. So, what is the property of the unit vector? The vector uh, a a is the vector it is magnitude is unity. So, the magnitude of this one is unity and its direction is along vector a. The magnitude of vector a and this is def, uh, in this way we can say that vector a will be equal to more of a into a a. So, there are various methods to um, various ways to represent that we can represent a a or you can write this one as the a a cap vector a divided by more of vector a. Okay. So, there are various method uh, ma ways to represent the same thing and as I said the magnitude is 1 and the direction along the a. Suppose we have any vector a, this is my vector a, okay. And to get the unit vector from that uh, from this one, so if this is my vector a, okay. So from here to here, this one, when we have the magnitude of a that is equal to 1. So up to here, this is nothing but the unit vector from the vector a. So, it means if you want to make if you want to uh, use the vectors. So, you have to multiply with the directions very simple. So, in this way suppose I want to define this vector. So, this vector can be represented as magnitude and the direction. So, this direction will be given by the this unit vector just keep this thing in your mind. Okay. So, there is a very very significant role of unit vector into the vectors right and very important without this unit vector you cannot define the vector quantity and for that one we have the uh, this definition mod of uh, a is equal to mod of a into a a. So, the vectors in the Cartesian or rectangular coordinate systems. Okay. So, in this we will start in the next lecture and we will take the complete derivation of and the application of the unit vector. Okay? So, thank you very much till the next lecture. Thank you.